You're listening to the Jam Pro Show all about movies. And today my guest is Tayana David. And we're going to be talking about the Illuminate, is that correct? <laughs> Film Festival that is uh, coming to Santa Barbara for the first time after having been in Sedona for what, almost 10 years or nine years. So I'm looking forward to talking to you about this fabulous film festival that you have coming up. So welcome to the show. Dan. Oh, thank you, Jan. Thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to telling you and your audience all about Illuminate as well. I can't wait to hear it. So let's first start with why you decided to move it from Sedona, Arizona, where I used to live before I moved to California. I lived there for just about two years, and um, which is a beautiful place. Uh, but why did you decide after nine years to move it to Santa Barbara? Well, that's a great question. And I actually wasn't involved in Illuminate initially. It was founded by a woman named Danette Walpert, who was the ED up until last year. But she and the board felt like Illuminate had outgrown Sedona. Sedona is now a population of less than 10,000. It is a little hidden, a little difficult to get to. Yeah. And the board felt like it's time for Illuminate to reach more people to touch more people, to be more accessible, to be closer to the entertainment industry in Los Angeles, and just to be able to spread its wings a little bit. So the natural choice was Sedona. It's demographically somewhat aligned with Sedona, although there are, I would say, you know, obviously more universities in Santa Barbara, um, probably a little bit more of an environmentalist crowd. And so what we're doing is we're just shifting Illuminate to maintain its, its original sort of mission of using the power of cinema to elevate consciousness and create lasting personal and planetary change, you know, through cinema. Um, and so we're using that, um, but we're also expanding and including a little bit more of a an environmental bent um, with a new programming track called Illuminature. And so it's an interesting dance this first year as we as we move into Santa Barbara, where we're um, just encompassing, you know, a, I would say a more diverse audience and really wanting to make sure that everyone feels included in the movement to evolve humanity, uplift us and just keep making a world that works for all. I love it. I love it. It's that's great. And I agree with you. Movies can change uh, the world. They really can. So this sounds like this type of film festival certainly sounds like it's one that certainly is going to from the films from the lineup that I've seen so far, some fascinating films and some incredible speakers, too, that you have coming in uh, to the film festival. So let's let's talk a little bit about the lineup uh, and some of the speakers that you're going to be bringing in. Oh, yeah. Happy to. So we have on opening day, which is Friday, April 5th, we have a Purpose 2.0 Lab. And I know this is unusual for a film festival, but this shows you what Illuminate is about. It's really um, like, where do you plug in to the bigger picture of being, being in service? If that is of interest to you, then come to the Purpose Lab. It's free, right. you just need to RSVP and you'll be guided to just tune into what is yours to do and what really lights you up because as harold thurman says um the world doesn't need you know more people trying to help it needs more people who are lit up and and just by by finding what is yours to do that actually contributes to the well-being of humanity so um so after that we have a couple of films during the day at fiesta five including a remastered edition a fifth year anniversary edition of fantastic fungi and uh we'll have some pre-screening words from louis schwartzberg just how has this five-year journey been since fantastic fungi was released and what now um it'll be then followed by a panel that will have a focus on psilocybin for healing and um, that's, of course, like very, uh, very hot topic right now and, and um, I think has tremendous potential. So it's important that we have these conversations in community. Um, then we go to our, our official opening night and that happens at the Libero. We'll have a green carpet experience with, you know, free samples of juice and tea on the Libero steps. And then um, it's, it's a film called Love Over Money. 
And this is the story of John Robbins. John Robbins was the heir to Baskin Robbins. He was set to inherit billions of dollars and he just didn't feel right about taking on this business that he felt was not kind to animals, was you know, using a tremendous amount of sugar to essentially get people hooked on ice cream and that was making them sick. So he chose a completely different path and it was a very courageous move on his part when I think many folks would have just taken the easy, so-called easy route of comfort and luxury and lots of money. And he didn't, he went and forged his own path. And I won't say any more because I don't want to give it away, but this is the first time (laughs) he's allowed his story to be told in a documentary. And uh, I should say though, that before we show that film, we have a very special keynote speaker and that is Mr. Deepak Chopra. Mm -hmm. So um, we're honored that Deepak is joining us for our opening night to share some wisdom about the power of story and the interconnectedness of all of us which is evidenced by, you know, the quantum field and all of this so-called new science that's coming out that's actually just mirroring a lot of ancient ancient spiritual wisdom um, about the, the interconnected fabric of the universe. It's so interesting, right, how science is affirming what the sages have known for so long. And Deepak is really a special person who sits at that intersection, I feel, of science and spirituality and has been um, living the questions in that regard for so many years has been an inquiry and um so so there's Deepak and then um you know we go to Saturday and a whole slate of films to do with health and wellness we have a film about Ayurveda called The Natural Law um we have uh oh goodness we have the source. Um, actually, it's just called Source, and it's it's a documentary about where we have the world premiere of Joe Dispenza's work mm-hmm. in the most rigorous scientific study to date, I believe, um, measuring the effects of meditation on the physiology of human beings. And it takes place at a Joe Dispenza retreat or a series of them. And I mean, it's it's the same same rigor they use for pharmaceutical studies. So it's, uh, you know, as applied to meditation, it just blows your mind, actually, at how um, how our thoughts can affect our bodies. (laughs) And there's like little wiggle room once you see this film to to dispute that. So that's tremendously empowering, I think, because it tells us that we all have the power actually to to, you know, determine or let's say largely influence our physical and mental well-being. Um, And then let's see Sunday. Oh, gosh, I'm so excited about this film on Sunday that we have called Unveiled Joyce Tennyson and the Heroine's Journey. So Joyce Tennyson is considered one of the top 10 female photographers of all time. Mm -hmm. And she's in her 70s. She lives in Maine. There's a documentary directed by Rebecca Dreyfus about her. And it um, will have it. But not only that, we'll have Joyce here from Maine. And after the documentary plays, she's going to give a presentation about her artistic process, her current fascinations, really what she's looking for in subjects when she photographs them. And she's very famous for photographing women, but that's not all. She's also photographed men, but her, her very famous book is called Wise Women. It's mm. a gorgeous coffee table book. And um, she's photographed many of the who's who of women of our day, but, but also just your everyday woman. And she captures something in them that is just so um, unique and special. And so we're, we're thrilled to have Joyce with us and just, you know, to be honoring the, the rise of the feminine, I think in our, in our world and in our storytelling. Very exciting lineup and many wonderful people. I'm going to go jump back a little bit. Um, John Robbins, of course, many of us read his books. Um, (laughs) but I now get, I believe it's his son, Ocean Robbins. Yes. And I'm on his email list. I get an email from him every single day. And I've, you know, passed that on to friends, <laughs> you know, like, I think you might be interested in this because he, and it's always, it is like, what, what nutrients do you need and what food will be the best to give you that nutrient? And, uh, 
you know, so it's gone down the generation, which I, I think is fabulous. I think I love that, Jen. Thanks for pointing that out. It's really interesting when we think about family constellation work or intergenerational, whatever. Um, it seems like John really broke a a generational a pattern, right? He really, he really just broke it, and now he he set this this new lineage in motion that his son is is following in and helping so many people. Yes. And what I love about them is the recognition of the relationship between personal and planetary health. Mm -hmm. We cannot have one without the other. So, you know, pu putting the best nutrients inside of our own bodies, meaning organic, hopefully locally grown, hopefully regeneratively farmed, um, that allows the most nutrients to sustain us, right? So like by not poisoning our environment, we're not poisoning ourselves. And I know it seems basic, but it, it's amazing to me how many people don't recognize that we are our environment. It's not separate from us. So I'm sure you're familiar with Common Ground, Rebecca and Josh of course, movie. of course, okay. and their friends yes. and exactly. And so on that note, I'll just mention and I'm, I'm just mentioning a handful of films. There's there's right. quite a few more, but um, our closing night film and you made me think of it just now. It is about regenerative agriculture. It's called Wilding. Oh, yes. It's yes. from the UK, directed by David Allen and uh, Tangled Bank Studios is behind it. It's it's this really fun, true story. Um, based on a book by Isabel Tree of the same name. So it's a young couple who inherit a big estate in the English countryside. And it's been farmed conventionally for many, many decades. It's just the way it's always been done. And they have an awakening and, and realize just what we were talking about, the interconnection of personal and planetary health. And, and they, against all odds, they figure out how to do things differently and that that means bringing back certain species of animals that that haven't been on that land for god knows how long but really rewilding the place and mm. understanding that actually mother nature knew how to do it in the first place so how can we just essentially just help nature do her thing uh, and get out of the way or you know steward with with minimal in invasion so so we're very excited about wilding because it has never been shown in santa barbara and there's such a big passionate regenerative agriculture food as medicine scene as you know so so we're looking forward to that and and i should say that our our hub is the community environmental council our hub for all three days so that's kind of like the lounge it's where you can go get some free coffee and tea it's where you can chat with you know fellow filmmakers or fellow audience members and compare notes about the films and the panels. So we're, we're really excited to be um, partnering with the Community Environmental Council because it aligns with our mission. Oh, I think that's amazing what you're doing. I really do. I'm very excited about this uh, film festival. It's right, you know, it, it, right in alignment with what I believe and what ha I have believed for many, many, for most of my adult life, I would say. Yeah. I, I meditate every day to Deepak Chopra. Uh, you know, every day I have for years and years and years with Deepak and Oprah when they have their right, stories. right. Do you know and, I, I hear that a lot? A lot of people meditate with Deepak or Deepak and Oprah. And um, I, I actually used to work for Deepak in New York City. I was the director of his center in New York City for quite a few years, and um, so it, it uh, you know, it always surprises me when I I, I understand that I, he has such a wide reach and people. Um, you know, they really do listen to him quite frequently. And of course he's written over 90 books. He keeps saying, this is my last book. This is my last book. And then he writes another one. Um, he's pretty prolific that way. So, um, but I'm just reminded, I'm reminded to share that we're doing a virtual festival after the in-person. So for people who are listening, who don't live in the Santa Barbara area, um, we have a week long, it's from Monday, the 8th of April to Sunday the 14th virtual festival with many of the same films, not all, but many, and then also some new films. And um, that's a way that a global audience can tune in. We typically have people from a hundred different countries. And there's also a few little live Zoom events that people can join and just feel the community of the transformational film space. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that so that people know that those virtual all access passes are 
are just now on sale. And okay. um, yeah. Let's tell them we're, we'll, we'll do it again at the end of the show, but let's tell them now, since you're talking about it, how they can go ahead and get their ticket, the virtual tickets and tickets for in-person too. Uh, while, while we're at that, at this point. <laughs> sure. Sure. So the easiest way is to go to 2024.illuminatefilmfestival.com. And that'll take you to everything that's happening in person, virtual. I will say we've been so surprised at the response and our all access passes are already sold out. So, um, you know, it, in person, our all access in person, and we're just thrilled. However, we still have single tickets for every single film. We still have virtual passes available and we still have a few spots in a wonderful creativity lab that is also happening in Santa Barbara on the heels of the in-person. It's called Source to Screen. And it's taking place at the Empathy Center, which is on top of a like a hill um, in the sort of like Las Canoas area with gorgeous 360 degree views. And it's being taught by award-winning filmmakers, Peter Rader and Paula Di Florio. They made the film Awake, The Life of Yogananda, which mm -hmm. kind of shattered all box office records for an indie spiritual film and actually was, was launched at Illuminate. Um, and so I just want to just put a plug for, for that because it's a rare occasion to study with these two and they've offered it at Esalen in the past. It's always sold out. They've offered it at other retreat centers and, um, but we're just so delighted to have them offering it in Santa Barbara and it's kind of perfect if people have been watching, uh, inspiring, you know, transformational cinema for three days and then go to this deep dive course for themselves, whether you're writing a screenplay or just working on a book or, uh, you know, a piece of music, or even they've had people who are launching conscious products take their course and come out with a clearer sense of the direction to go in. So um, that's source to screen. And that's also, that's also uh, available, you know, more information on our website. Great. And the website is again, so it's 2024.illuminatefilmfestival.com. Okay. And we'll repeat it again. And we'll also put it on the social media when we post about the show. So we'll make sure that's in there. So it's incredibly excited. How, how did, and you have Louis Schwartzberg, who's been on my show also uh, for his film, Gratitude Revealed, which is also a, yeah. just an absolutely wonderful film that's out there for people to be, you know, as long as we're talking about um, spirituality and uh, how we are interconnectedness, that's one that you know, gratitude is just such a big part of everything that we do. And uh, so, yes, I mean, it's always like I wake up with an attitude of gratitude every day. And, and, uh, <laughs> Great. I got an opportunity to um, to meet uh, Norman Lear, who was featured very prominently in Gratitude Revealed. It was shortly after that. He was 100 and it was in L.A. And uh, he his whole talk, it was a question and answer, and it was all about gratitude. The whole mm. thing, he, everything he talked about was about gratitude. So I got an opportunity to meet him afterwards to tell him, Louis had just been on my show and, you know, and talked about gratitude. And he said, never, never stop doing that. And I think that's why, you know, when he passed away, this last year, everybody was so um, heartbroken, even though he was 101 and he had a wonderful life that just, he was such an amazing spirit, you know, I, as I well totally as everything that he accomplished. Yeah. I really agree with you. And he used his art as activism. And that's also something that Illuminate really wants to highlight, propagate, support, get behind we really feel that whatever whatever your activism is whether it is you know forthright or more subtle but it's you taking action towards something that you believe in um, we encourage our filmmakers to create from that place of purpose and we create we encourage our our audience members to engage with the films from that sense of curiosity and Really, I think allowing the films to be reflections, like what are, what am I being shown about myself by watching this film and what can I consider? What are the 
the opportunities for me to grow by watching this film um, or having a window into a world that I never, ever, ever would have had a window into before. Um, speaking of empathy, you know, I think films are such a powerful medium to build empathy, right? Because they're so intimate. I mean, we, we get to step through the screen into a world that is usually not our own and, um, and hopefully feel some caring. And I would say ultimately what we're trying to do at Illuminate is to build a caring civilization. Like when, you know, underneath all of the, the so-called glamor and the green carpet and the, uh, you know, the, the names, um, really, really what we're doing is, is hoping to foster a society that is solution oriented and um and i i think i think too we we were so much about community um like community is is the answer to so many of our problems um i think it's meg wheatley she says we cannot solve the problems of the future by knowing what they are but we can solve them by knowing each other mm. and illuminate believes so strongly in that and what what better way to bring people together than around these films that are created from a, you know, a heartfelt space. Um, so yeah, the, the fa it strengthens the fabric of our society, I believe, to, to come together around these meaningful topics and stories. Yeah, and we need it now more than ever. I think the world needs it, you know, and we say that all the time, but it just seems like we need it more now than ever. Uh, you know, and that's why, and I've said this, is that I get to illuminate filmmakers who are doing this kind of work, which, you know, it's, that's what I love doing is giving them um, a, a, a platform to talk about what they do in a deeper, in a deeper dive, which is what this is all about. And that's what your film festival will be about too, because you'll be taking a deeper dive when you have the panels after the films are shown, or just as you say, the places that you, the place, the place you've created for people to go and talk and, and mm -hmm. discuss the films afterwards and see what may have shifted inside of them, because that's, you're right. That's what it's all about. That's yeah. so right, Jan. And, and to that point, our theme this year is movies make movements happen. Mm, perfect. And the, you know, and the invisible part of that is in your heart. Movies make movements happen in your heart. Yes, in the outer world, but sort of first in your heart, I think. That's yeah. been my experience. Yes. So yeah. I, I love what you're saying, and I appreciate that you give a platform to filmmakers who are creating from this place. Um, I actually talk a lot about Dharma art, which is something Chogyam Trumpa Rinpoche, uh, the Tibetan Lama, coined, I guess you could say, and it's it's art that springs from an awakened state of mind. Mm. So like, I'm hoping that all of the films we select, we we endeavor to select films that really are Dharma art there, they've, they've been created from an awakened state of mind, and that enables them to be a, a transmission. Um, because it's so much more than just the, the technical things. It's really like, what is the intention in the heart in the film that shines through. I, I just time and time again, the consciousness of the creator I experience comes through the art. And that in itself is even more powerful than what's even said. So it's, it's mysterious and it's powerful and it takes us all the way back to, I think just ritual actually. I mean, theater, before theater was theater, mm -hmm. it was actually mm -hmm. ritual. Right. And and then theater became theater and and then it eventually branched off and became this thing we call cinema. Um, but I think if we go back to the roots of why we come together, it is to connect to something larger than ourselves, I guess we could say. Beautifully said, <laughs> beautifully said, dear. you are a beautiful soul yourself and you just, you illuminate <laughs> off the screen. Oh, good. Uh, I, I, I better <laughs> to, to, to be worthy of this job. <laughs> Sorry. To be worthy of this, this job that I'm in, I better, I better walk my talk. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just, I'm looking forward to this film festival. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be just such, it, 
just going to be the bright light of the season, I think, uh, for sure, the film season here. Again, let's tell people where they can, uh, if they want to come to the film festival in person, where can they purchase their tickets and also virtually? Sure. So for all tickets and the virtual pass and to find out more about Source to Screen, it's 2024.illuminatefilmfestival.com. You'll find everything you need there. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm, I wish you much success with the film festival this year. Uh, it's a very exciting lineup and, and you've done a fabulous job. You and Kit have done a great, and your team have done a fabulous job with uh, putting this together. And I'm so happy you decided to move here. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, Jan. I just really appreciate what you're up to as well and um, this community that we're in together. So um, honored to be on the show and, and just really look forward to seeing you at the festival in, in a month. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Tiana. Have a great day. Appreciate you it. You too.